So now that we have our new formula for the integral of a natural log, uh, let's see if we can make it work in a couple of problems. So first problem I'd like to take a look at is the integral of the natural log of x divided by the square root of x all times dx. Now it may not be readily apparent exactly what substitution you might want to use here, but I would like to point out that anytime you have any constant multiple of the natural log of x, you can wind up with x raised to whatever that coefficient was by using the appropriate um, property of logarithms. So what I'm going to recommend for this one is just try let u being equal to the square root of x. Or if you wanted to go equivalently, you could say that x is equal to u squared. This is usually a substitution that's pretty good at getting rid of uh, rogue uh, square roots that you have around. Now, one mentality to get into is we could treat this as x to the one-half power and say that du is equal to 1 over 2 square roots of x dx. The alternative would be to come up with the differential this way. So dx would be equal to 2u times du. You can use either of these substitutions in this case because we do have a very conveniently placed square root of x in this denominator. I'm actually going to demonstrate this with the substitutions on the right. <clears throat> we're going to wind up with the integral of the natural log instead of x, that'll now be at u squared, divided by square root of x, square root of x we said is equal to u, and then dx would be equal to 2u times du. So with that in mind, we do have some algebra that we can do with this. The algebra that can be done, we can cancel a u with a u, and be left with 2 times the natural log of u squared du. Now this isn't exactly in the form that we want it, but we can pull this 2 down front as a coefficient. So the original coefficient of 2 stays put, the 2 that was the power will come down as a 2 as well, and we'll have the natural log of u du. Or if we factor those 2's out, we come up with exactly the formula that we derived in the previous video. The formula that we came up with for this was, uh, it was with x's, but this time it'll be with u. So it'll be u times the natural log of u minus u plus a constant. Now, of course, we should substitute back. And let's go ahead and distribute this 4 through as well. So 4 times u, square root of x times the natural log of u, u again is the square root of x, minus 4 times u, which is the square root of x. Additionally, um, there's not a whole lot more algebra that needs to take place, but if you wanted to treat this as x to the 1 half power and do the same trick that we did here, you could reduce this 4 down to a 2 by introducing a coefficient of 1 half. Just a possibility, certainly not required wanted to try out one more, and I wanted to try it out actually a couple different ways. Here's the integral of the natural log of the cosine of x times the tangent of x dx. Now it might seem pretty apparent what you might want to use for a substitution here, since we do have a composition of functions. Let u be equal to the cosine of x. Now if we let u be equal to the cosine of x, then du would be equal to the negative sine of x times dx or equivalently the sine of x times dx would be equal to negative du. Now in order for us to get to that point, we need to actually make use of some trigonometric identities in our integral. This would be the natural log of the cosine of x, then using a quotient identity, this would be the sine of x over the cosine of x times dx. That way we can link together the sine of x with the dx to become negative du, and make substitutions on our cosines. So this would be the integral of, this will become the natural log of u times sine of x dx will become negative du and the cosine of x will become u. That looks like it should probably be cleaned up a bit, so we'll call this the negative natural log of u divided by u times du. Now, in its current form, it looks similar to what we saw on the previous problem, but this one will actually be integrated using a secondary substitution. Now, because we've already used u, you should probably use a different variable for this. I'm going to go with t. I'm going to say, let's let t be equal to the natural log of u. 
That way our differential would be dt, that is 1 over u, times du. Now conveniently, we can rewrite this integral as negative integral of natural log of u times 1 over u times du. That way we can group these two guys together, 1 over u times du, and call that dt. The natural log of u then would simply become t. So we'd be looking at the integral of the negative or excuse me, the negative integral of t dt. Making use of the power rule, that's simply going to be negative one-half t squared plus a constant. <clears throat> now with that in mind, we need to substitute back. t was equal to the natural log of u. So this will be negative one-half times the natural log of u quantity squared plus c. This is not a situation where this power comes down front because it's not the argument that's being squared, it's the actual logarithm that's being squared. Finally, we'll substitute back from way at the top of the page. u is equal to the cosine of x, and so I will substitute that back in as well. So negative one-half times the natural log of the cosine of x quantity squared plus c. And of course, if you're interested in checking your answer, which I currently am not, you can always differentiate this thing and see if you wind up with something good.